Do not fall for RFK Jr.'s lies. He is playing a game and you should not believe a single word he says. We know for a fact that he is a spoiler candidate who is being bankrolled by Trump's biggest donors. He has been fact-checked to his face multiple times and refuses to admit he was wrong. He downplays Trump's actions consistently. It's safe to say he's not even a real Democrat. Adam Kinzinger ripped him apart on CNN, but first, let's watch Caitlin Collins fact-check him. Given the fact that Kennedy, who I should note, 13% of Americans right now say they would like to be the next commander in chief, is pushing these lies, we wanted to take a moment tonight to set the record straight. In his second attempt at a cleanup in as many days, and in response to a CNN request for comment, he's already retracting part of his claim that those same reasonable people tell him protesters carried no weapons. The truth is, folks like Guy Reffitt are serving time for bringing a gun onto Capitol grounds that day or because court documents show that Christopher Alberts was arrested carrying a loaded pistol and 25 rounds of ammunition. There's also Mark Ibrahim, an off-duty agent for the DEA who was charged with bringing his service weapon on Capitol grounds. That's all before you get to the guy who was arrested with a pistol and a rifle who showed up too late for the riot, but had talked about killing Nancy Pelosi. Or the man who parked a truck with 11 homemade bombs, a handgun and a rifle just two blocks away from the Capitol. In all, the Justice Department has said 122 people face charges connected with carrying weapons on that day. That includes guns, stun guns, knives, batons, baseball bats, flagpoles, and chemical sprays. RFK Jr.'s statement also claims that none of the rioters had plans to overthrow the government. Hmm. Even as more than a dozen members of the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys have been convicted of or already pleaded guilty to sedition. And the idea that this is all politically motivated by the Biden administration completely ignores the fact that the prosecutions began almost immediately while Donald Trump was still in office. That was a great breakdown by Caitlin Collins, and it could not be more clear at this point that RFK Jr. is a right-wing stooge. He is a plant. I mean, everyone I know that is entertaining the idea of voting for RFK Jr. was a previous Trump voter. So I say, go for it, because no Democrat that I know is going to vote for the dude who is constantly downplaying Trump's actions and constantly spreading conspiracy theories about January 6th. The only people that will vote for RFK Jr. are people that are already inclined to believe these conspiracy theories. And also, the fact that RFK Jr. said that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump is absolutely laughable. We have the hour-long phone call of Donald Trump pressuring Brad Raffensperger into finding votes. And in that phone call, he pushes election fraud lies that he knew were false. Raffensperger even debunks the lies in that phone call, and Donald Trump just slithers around and pivots to the next lie. We have the unconstitutional legal theory created by John Eastman that said that that Mike Pence could unilaterally throw out votes. John Eastman then tried to pressure election officials into picking the false slate of electors, the illegal slate of electors. This isn't even mentioning Donald Trump's January 6th coup attempt. Well, and it also comes the same week that he, you know, both campaigns have been worried about him, certainly more so the, the Biden campaign, but it comes after he said that he believed Biden was a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. And when you know, you're looking at what happened on January 6th and exactly what Donald Trump did or did not do that day, I mean, it just makes those comments seem even richer in hindsight. Look, you can dislike Joe Biden, like, but you can't with a straight face. This isn't even, a, this isn't even subject, I mean, it's not even subjective. This is like fact. You can't with a straight face say that Joe Biden's a bigger danger to democracy. Joe Biden has gone along with democracy as he's president. He's gone along with the rules of democracy. He's not tried to overthrow any election results. The other thing he said is, what is it like, not a true insurrection or something along that line, not a yeah. real insurrection. It's like, I looked up the definition of insurrection just before this segment, and it's like uh, a violent uprising against an authority or government. So what part of a violent uprising against an authority or government was not a true insurrection? Was it not violent? Was it, was it not against the government? 
Like, it's a pretty basic definition. It's absolutely an insurrection. And he's just trying to get these MAGA folks to give him money. They, they give money to, to Donald Trump, and, and they're probably giving some money to him. I mean, his super PAC is being run by Republicans, for God's sakes. You can draw a direct line from Donald Trump's rhetoric in the months leading up to the election, in the months leading up to January 6th, and then his rally that he holds on January 6th at the Ellipse, walking distance from the Capitol. You can draw a direct line from that to the riot at the Capitol. His followers walked from that rally where he is inciting violence. They walked to the Capitol and then tried to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Joe Biden would never do that in a million years. He follows all of the norms. He's not a rule breaker. Donald Trump's whole thing is a slow erosion of norms. I mean, this is somebody who gained popularity because he came up with nicknames for his enemies in politics. This is somebody whose whole career is built off of breaking norms in America. We also know for a fact that while the riot at the Capitol was taking place, Donald Trump was sitting back, watching it unfold on TV, sipping Diet Coke and refusing to stop it, refusing to even call in the National Guard. And his followers will say, well, Nancy Pelosi should have called in the National Guard, but he is the commander in chief. He has ultimate authority and control over the National Guard, and he clearly wanted to see how far this riot could get. While he was sitting there watching it, his aides around him were telling him, sir, you have to call this off. You have to stop it. And he refused to until the last moment where he sends a tweet saying you can go home and all of his supporters, there's videos of them at the rally saying, oh, Trump told us we can go home, which further proves the point that they were just following Trump's lead. Congressman, I mean, part of the statement, you know, that I just can't get over. I have not examined the evidence in detail. You obviously did examine it in detail. What would you say to him tonight? Oh, I mean, I could go on for a 20-minute segment on this. You know, look, what you named on the people that were found with weapons, there's this idea that somehow the government knows everybody that was carrying weapons anyway. The government was unable to arrest everybody that day, or really many people that day, because they were fighting for survival of their own lives in the Capitol. That's why there weren't that many arrests, because they had no place to take them to. You can't take them into the middle of a war zone. So the vast majority of those people left the Capitol grounds, and we have no idea who else was armed, because it's not like we have you know, X-ray vision and we can go through the tape and see that. Look, this is, this is one of the more insane ramblings I've heard from him, and I've heard some insane ramblings. When he says, I haven't looked at the evidence in detail, you, you, you were around politicians a long time. You know how a politician is trying to like skate when they say things like, we have to take a deep look at something or mm -hmm. we need to have a conversation about it is a way of punting because they don't want to answer. This is his way of pleasing those that want to hear that he just hasn't looked at the evidence in detail and winking to the MAGA folks. I mean, here's the thing, Caitlin. He, he is, he's, his campaign has been hijacked by MAGA. Maybe not hijacked, maybe voluntarily. And so you're gonna start seeing more and more of this kind of Donald Trump conspiracies. And he's either going along with it because that's gonna help him raise money and get notoriety, or he truly believes it. Regardless, uh, he's absolutely wrong. And uh, this is a frightening thing.